Hi, fourth graders. So today we're going to talk about comparing fractions and we're going to do a quick review and then we're going to talk about how we can use those skills to help us order fractions. All right, so we're going to do comparing fractions and then ordering fractions. So to get started, we're going to look at these. I need this up. Give it a moment to work. There we go. All right. So when we're comparing fractions, sometimes we can use what are called benchmark fractions. Ooh. Benchmark fractions, which are like one half, uh, um, like a quarter, um, three quarters, zero, or one. Okay, so we're gonna look at each of these fractions. And we need to circle the fractions that are closer to zero than to one. So what I like to do is think about it as I'm picturing these pieces in my mind. Three quarters. So I've got four of something. And I have three of them filled in. Am I closer to none of them being filled in or to all of them? I'm closer to all of them. So, three quarters does not work. Does this work though? Nope, I don't think it does. Okay, so three quarters. But now let's say I have eight. Oop. There we go. That's what I want to do. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This time I have only one of them colored in. One of eight, one eight. That is pretty close to zero. That's about as zero as I can be without being zero eighths, which is nothing. So yes, one eighth does work. What do you think about one fourth? Well, it's like I have those four again, but instead of three, this time I only have one. So that is closer to zero. What about seven fifths? So this time I want a group of five, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so I got one, two, three, four, five. Uh oh, but I need seven of them. So I need another group of five. All right, and I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that is way over one, right? That's almost two. So nope, seven fifths doesn't work. What about two-fourths? I'm going to use this one down here. Instead of one-fourth, I'm just going to color in two-fourths. Is that closer to zero than to one? Well, it's right in the middle, isn't it? It's exactly half of our group. So two-fourths is neither, so that one doesn't work. What about three-tenths? Let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so I'm just going to add nine, ten. I'm going to color in three of the ten. Wow. It's way less. It's less than half, right? Because coloring the whole first row would be half. And it's way, it's far away from the full, but ten out of ten. Uh, so three tenths does work. All right. This time, let's try it with fractions that are less than one half. These are my favorite ones to do. Because all we gotta do is think of what would half of our number be? And then decide is our numerator smaller than that or bigger or is it equal? And that helps us figure out what we need to do. So five fourths. Well, I'm looking at my denominator of four and I know half would be two. So two fourths. Well, five fourths is bigger. So now five fourths is out. What about one fourth? We just said half of four would have been two. Two fourths. One fourth is less, so one fourth is less than one half. What about one fifth? One fifth is smaller, too. Ooh, what about two thirds? Two thirds is bigger than one half. Uh, two twelfths. Half would be six. Six twelves. I'm thinking in my head, I'm comparing it to. So, two twelfths is smaller, so yes. Ooh, what about 51 one hundredths? What would half of a hundred be? 
and it'll be 50 one hundredths. So I know then that 51 is bigger, so nope, 51 does not work. Awesome. All right, well, this time, let's try circling fractions that are greater than one half. So this time we want it to be on the bigger side. Well, we just knew that half of 100 was 50. So 99 one hundredths, sure. It, oh, sorry, I read the problem wrong. Fractions that are greater than one. So these ones, we're looking for things that are more than one. So what would, out of 100, what would our numerator have to be to be one whole? It had to be 100. So 99, not quite there. It's not greater than one. It's greater than one half, though. Ooh, what about six fifths? Because if we had fifths to be whole, it would be five. Yeah, six fifths does work because it's an improper fraction. Did you catch that? We're looking for improper fractions. Seven eighths is not quite a whole. What about 14 eighths, though? Totally improper. Can't even deal with it. Huh? What about 11 tenths? It's just over one. Good. What about 11 twelfths? Nope, just under one. So 11 twelfths doesn't work. All right. So, goodness, sorry. So now that we have those benchmark ideas in mind, we know we can compare them. I really like to compare them to zero, one half, and one. I like to think, where would they be on this line? Huh? So four twelfths. I know half would be six twelfths. And I know half of ten would be five twelfths. So four twelfths would be like right here, right? Just under half. And then five tenths, seven tenths would be about here, just over half. So I know that four twelfths is less than seven twelfths. Let's try another one. This time we have five tenths to one half. So I like to picture that zero, one half, and one. Five tenths, well half would be five tenths, and half of two is one. So wait a second. These two are equal. They're equivalent. Equal fractions are equivalent. Way to go, Rockstar. All right, you try this one. Hold on button. You try this one. Tell me, what do you think? Well, I know that the half would be 4 eighths, and 6 twelfths is exactly half. I know that 5 eighths is just a little bit bigger. So I know that 5 eighths is greater than 6 twelfths. Awesome job. All right, so now we're going to use these skills. And we are going to use them to help them put fractions in order from least to greatest. So let's look at that worksheet that we have attached on Google Classroom. We're going to do just a few of these together, okay? So we have to use our understanding of comparing fractions to order each set of fractions from least to greatest. All right, so I'm using my scales. I know that 5, 6 is pretty close to 1. And I know that 3 eighths is really close to 1 half, right? 4 eighths would be that. And 2 thirds isn't quite 1, but I know it's more than 1 half. So I know it's not quite... I know it's not quite one, but is it quite as big as five, six? If I look at my fraction pieces in my notebook, remember how we had that chart glued in? I see that one, two, three, four, five, six goes farther than two thirds. And that makes sense because I have smaller pieces and I have five of them now color using out of the six, whereas I had two big ones. So. Our smallest one here, then, we know is 3 eighths. Our next biggest one is 2 thirds. And our biggest is 5 sixths. All right, 
So let's try one more together. Five eighths, eight tenths, and one half. Well, I know one half is one half. It's really close to one half because it is one half. Eight tenths is close to one, right? Because it's only two away from being full. And five eighths is just over one half because one half would have been four eighths. So I think our smallest one, based off of our reasoning, is one half. And then we would do five eighths, two, three, four, five is just past one half. And then eight tenths should be our biggest. So then we order it one half, five eighths, eight tenths. And I'm also using my chart too to double check if I need, because that's a great tool to use. Thinking how far does it go over? So for homework, you're gonna do these last three then the back side is the same idea, but you're gonna do it differently. You're gonna do it from greatest to least. So let's try one of those and see how that would work. All right, so I know one half is, well, one half. One fifth is really close to zero. And three eighths is almost one half, but it's not quite there, right? So it's about one half. So my biggest fraction this time is actually one half, then three eighths is really close, and then one fifth is way close to zero. So that's how we do the back side. Use those comparing skills to help you figure out where they should go. All right, fourth grade friends, that's all we got for math today. Talk to you soon.